Hello and welcome to the show. I'm here on a Beam and Gia Drive today while playing some more with the Beam and Automation crossover. We're going to be testing out some vehicles by doing some crashes because I'm kind of curious to see how everything is going to react. We have got a half decent sort of speed Roma here. All wheel drive V8, not a supercharged race vehicle however decent amount of pace behind this thing and as you can expect it is fairly large fairly heavy you know fairly strong you wouldn't want to get hit by this in the side at about 70 miles an hour which is what we're going to be doing so we're going to test out some different vehicles we have got a d-series pickup kind of beams default vehicle we have got my v8 hatchback good old beaky over there was not really designed with safety or anything in mind was designed to be a fairly affordable and bloody fast hatchback then we have got two new vehicles that i bet now I, I knocked these up pretty quickly they're not you know very well designed their engines aren't great but they are designed for a very specific purpose the ute here is designed to be as strong and as heavy as possible in there fairly basic however it is built with you know advanced safety uh, everything as heavy as i could get on it over here, the little uh, the little sports car is not. This is made of fiberglass. It is designed to be basically as weak as I could get in terms of material. In fact, I, I think when it got to the uh, to the end screen, to the um, market screen when building it on automation, uh, just about nowhere would have it because it was too unsafe. Uh, so <laughs> we have got very unsafe, supposedly theoretically very strong kind of average hatchback and a default car from beam and the plan is to see how they are going to fare in their respective crashes so the way it's going to work we part them up by well on, the, on this car park i'm going to go up to this end there is these nice little you know markers that i can sort of park my roma on we will accelerate towards them we should be doing about 70 miles an hour by the time we hit the vehicles now of course, this is a pretty nasty crash. At the end of the day, this is a pretty, a pretty damn nasty crash that uh, we are going to be simulating here on the side of the D-Series. I mean, it does, you know, a sizable amount of damage. It's unlikely to kill the D-Series. It's a strong, strong vehicle. I mean, the Roma has survived this one. It's got a punctured radiator. I mean, it's smashed up front. It's not a happy car anymore, but it is pretty wrecked. The... <laughs> The D-Series, it does still work. I don't think it actually took any major, any kind of major internal damage. One of the tyres is gone by the looks. The rest of it, fairly, you know, broken, but relatively, you know, it, it survived that. I just wouldn't want to be inside the truck when it got hit. So that's the damage done to the D-Series. Oh, we're going to tab through all the vehicles to get to our our Roma. Right, we'll reset this. If I don't reset it, it's going to be hitting cars with, well, it's going to have a broken front end. So the front end will hit with a different, I guess, shape, perhaps having different sorts of, sorts of impacts, essentially. Uh, so up next, we have got the fairly normal the, I say the mundane, that'd perhaps be a little bit unfair because it's got a 400 horsepower V8, but a normal hatchback in a side-on collision <laughs> it killed the Roma. <laughs> I mean, look, visual damage-wise to the Roma is fairly similar. Uh, smushed up front, it actually did kill the engine. Now, we go to the hatchback, and you can see, yeah, I mean, it's... It's, it's crashed in a similar way. However, you can see how tough these cars are. That's so same same speed impact on a vehicle not exactly designed to be heavy duty here and compare it to the D series. Yeah. I mean again, it is a, a direct on side impact that we that we have done on this car. You know, we have seen in previous in previous videos I've done with this crossover. They can lose wheels, they can real bend up corners, but a direct side impact has not actually done too much to the to Beaky. Okay, you're going to need a reset because your engine is completely knackered. Now, I, I'm expecting this next one to be quite bad for the Roma. I'm going to be honest. I'm expecting this next one to be not great for, for the Roma. For the pickup, I'm not sure. We'll give it again. We'll give it a try. We'll find out. I'm suspecting this pickup is actually going to take very little in the way of damage. It's going to, of course, going to have the door caved in and whatnot, but that is probably about it. Are we going to. 
Oh, we've killed the engine again on the Roma, as we would expect. And it is a fairly, a fairly, actually, I mean, I say it's a fairly mundane amount of damage. Considering this is supposed to be the strong car, that actually is, it's pushed the front in quite a lot. I mean, you can you can see when we did it to the D-Series how much it's really caved in the side. Exactly, it's bent even the bed of the pickup. Uh, you compare it to this, where, okay, from the top down, you can very much see where it's got hit. It's just not really bent out on the other side again. Yeah, strong car. And... I mean, in comparison to the little hatchback, I don't think the hatchback's actually done too badly, all things considered. Consider it, I mean, again, like, roofline-wise, the front of this is actually more buckled, I think, than the hatchback in some way. It's pushed in a little bit more, just a larger area is pushed in on the hatchback, whereas this it was kind of all focused on, on that one point. So, so far... Those two, well, the two, the two automation cars have been very strong. This is kind of what I was expecting to see. I was just curious to find out how it would go. This one should be an interesting one. The little sports car is supposedly very weak. The little sports car here is supposedly very weak in terms of in terms of automation. Will the engine in the Roma survive this? Will the little car survive this? Will we ping a wheel off our little convertible? Well, kind of hardtop version of a convertible. So, our engine does survive it. In fact, we don't really take very much damage at all. We take less damage hitting that than we did hitting the D-Series. We haven't even smashed the window of the, of the Roma. Okay. So, that has definitely survived pretty well. The radiator's gone, of course it is, but... The front end's not buckled up or anything. Uh, so that was what it did to the D-Series. Those are those two. And our little spool, dear. <laughs> a little sports car. And I mean, it does technically still work. It does technically still work. But I would think that being in the driver's seat of that car, if it was a left-hand drive, I mean, we can actually see where the chassis is poking out of the bodywork. That's a... Yeah. I mean, we <laughs> compare it to these two over here. Very, uh, I say very similar. I mean, all four vehicles have had very similar sorts of crash damage because they've all come from a very similar sort of crash. I think the big difference between the beam cars and the automation cars is with the D-Series is twisted sort of throughout the entire chassis. You know, the, the bed of the truck's poking out the other side. Whereas when it comes to these automation cars... The crash, the damage is all done on one side of them. I mean, you can very clearly see when you go from... Let's go have a get a get an oopsie, didn't mean to drive that. I get a little bit of a free camera around. You can very clearly see that the... Oh, hold on, there we go. Uh, the right-hand side of the car is, you know, barely touched. Maybe a little bit on the pickup. I don't even think there. The right-hand side is not really bent in. It's how badly caved in does the left-hand side get. And I mean, it's kind of the way we expected. Little sports car... Gets caved in very badly. The hatchback, uh, I think it gets caved in slightly more than the very strong pickup. Although that did more damage to it than I kind of initially thought it would. Uh, yeah, a little, a little sports car is a pretty big mess. The <laughs> sports car is a pretty big mess. Okay, well, it was certainly an interesting little experiment. Now what I think we're going to do is, so of these three... It looks, well, I say it looks like, unsurprisingly, the pickup is pretty tough. So, what happens if we drive the pickup at the beam car? So far, we've been driving the beam car at the, well, expected stronger vehicles. So, what happens if we change, I should probably move the Roma out of the way. Uh, excuse me, Roma, we will go back. So, it's going to be, it'll probably be a little bit faster impact. We'll try, well, I'll tell you what, we will try and, try and do this scientifically. Uh, this will, I imagine, be quicker than the Roma. So, instead, oh, the Roma's, I might have left the handbrake off the, oh. Now the wall will catch it, it's fine. We've been crashing into cars at 70, so I hardly think a light bump into a wall is a massive concern. So, we'll... Again, I will try. I will try and you know, judge the speed. We'll go at seventy miles an hour, or just below seventy, into uh, the Roma's got fair, fairly decent speed into the side of these vehicles. Uh, interesting impact-wise on that D series, it's actually very similar. To be fair, of course, to the to the Ute, it's probably got a lower nose. It's probably got a lower nose. Is that the size of the impact is going to be different? In that 
is, I think, a little bit more buckled. I think that just the, the, the general chassis buckling again is a little bit greater. Fairly similar impacts. Fair. I, I was kind of half expecting this to get obliterated. I mean, it is worse. I think the chassis is worse bent than the impact from the Roma, but from the same speed, remarkably similar in terms of damage. Okay, so what about automation car on automation car? What happens when we go 70 miles an hour from this? So it's theoretically a stronger object, but hitting an equally stronger object. So I guess we're likely to see similar levels of damage on the on 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 the beaky potentially at least. Right, so there we go. This is at about the speed. We pinged it clear. Uh, I like how all of these things have got impact detection things going on. And again, okay, it has. I mean, it punched a tire. Body damage wise, so I have to tap through all of the vehicles to get to the one we want. Body damage wise. Again, slightly greater. Yeah, we got a tire in that, but that could also be just with how I hit. I think I've got suspension potentially as well. That that rear, maybe it's just because it much because the tire's down. To be fair, the suspension looks a little bit uh, funky. Suspension looks very funky. Uh, <laughs> I'm not I'm not sure whether that's just a side effect. Because if we go with the brakes, yeah, it might be just a side effect of that tire. Yeah, that's got quite a lot of... Okay, I don't think it's from the crash. I think that might just be... I'm really noticing. We might want stiffer suspension on this car. I'm just noticing how much it dives under brakes. So, fairly fairly consistent crash, actually, between the Roma and the squished face ute over there. Finally, we hit the little sports car. Now, again, we're hitting it at the same speed. It doesn't actually matter where I take off from here as long as we get to the... As long as we hit them at roughly the same, or at a controlled pace, we're going to hit the sports car at 70 miles an hour. Oh, we took a wheel off of it. <laughs> we did steal a wheel. Ah, perfect. We can go back to our wheel-stealing routes from the old demo derbies. And, I mean, that's going to be... That's a lot of damage. Okay, I might have hit this one. I think this, hit this one a little further back than I did in the previous. The previous run it is probably still going to be drivable after that, but only just because. <laughs> again, you can see how much that frame is growing. Actually, you can tell I hit that one further back. Not intentional. Uh, Tried to keep the test scientific and everything. It's taken a big chunk out of the out of the corner. Yeah, it's still still working. It doesn't really go very quickly. Well, considering it's missing a wheel and just had a 70 mile an, Im mile an hour impact from a very strong... There we go. Once the turbos kick in, then we're better. <laughs> okay. That was a 70 mile an hour impact. Shall we see what happens when we go even faster? Now, this is going to be probably one of the quickest vehicles we have... Certainly one of the quickest vehicles I have spawned here at the moment. Let's go and give it a real big run-up. We'll see what we can do. We'll hit the little car, just because... Why not? This might break my pickup slightly. Might break the pickup a little bit in all of this. That's okay. I have just noticed... Uh, the first time I noticed it, there's a little bit of suspension clipping going through the through the bed of the bed of the vehicle. Again, I mean, this is still... Uh, I'm still playing this technically with early access, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of updates to the whole uh, crossover aspect of the game. Hell, I could probably just do it with better suspension. So here we go, 97 miles an hour into the side. Oh, I think we took off both of its wheels. Not too much drastic difference, actually, to my truck. <laughs> I mean, the front's gone. The front's squished regardless. How is the sports car? Oh, wow, that's a lot of pain. That's a lot of pain for the little sports car. That is a lot of... I mean, that doesn't... Of course, it doesn't work anymore. From Again, though, it's like from this side, it doesn't really warp the frames too much of the vehicle. From that side there, it almost looks okay. I mean, it looks like it's had a slow speed impact with the wall because it's a little bit buckled up at the front. And then you go around the <laughs> that side, and there's just a giant... A giant crater. Hell, can we get... Oh, we can get in here and have a poke around... At the suspension, I think you've even got your engine. So if we have a little poke around inside here, that's the engine that I built for this one. Fairly, you know, straightforward four-cylinder in here. Again, as I said, these vehicles did not run anything massively complex. They were just built for testing purposes. Uh, this thing's got a big V8 uh, under the bonnet. Say a big V8, about 450-odd horsepower V8 in there. Um, so... <laughs> 
Yeah, that is a... Uh, that is a heavily, heavily broken little sports car. Do have one idea that I'm kind of curious about. Kind of curious as to how much damage this thing can cause. Right, we are all set up. I don't actually think you can see quite in the distance yet what we are going to be hitting. You probably have a pretty good idea. Uh, anyway, is the sort of thing I might be curious to know as to whether we can uh, potentially tear a bus in half or it, how far we can bury this in the side of a bus if we hit it at 100 or so miles an hour. Here we go, Railways Industries Ute. Can you puncture a bus? Oh, you do a lot of damage to a bus. You don't go through a bus. Uh, <laughs> um, Ferris Industries Ute, you are slightly stuck. I, I was, I was expecting this thing to be pretty, pretty tough, pretty strong. I was kind of half expecting it to maybe slightly go through. Well, I say go through the bus. Do a little bit more damage to the bus. I will be honest here. I mean, it is entirely wedged in the bus. Now, is it hold? Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember how to uh, change the strides. Just scroll up on there. There we go. We can pull it out with a uh, <laughs> with a little bit more forceful uh, node grabber. I mean, this thing has survived. Only one of the wheels still steers. The other one is is a goner. I mean, 100 mile an hour hit. We have very much. We've made it into a bendy bus slightly. I suspect this would probably still work. Yeah, it does. It does still drive. I mean, that, yeah, it, it buried its way a long way into the side of the bus. I mean, I was always hoping for a slightly more spectacular crash. You know, when I set out, started on this, I was expecting the beam vehicles to be horrendously, horrendously overpowered in terms of strength when hitting the... Sorry, the automation vehicles would be horrendously overpowered when they came to hitting the, the beam cars. And I'm not sure they are. You know, I'm not sure they are horrendously overpowered. They are strong, and the way they deform does seem to mostly affect whatever side gets hit in a way. It doesn't quite deform in the same way that the beam vehicles do. However, in terms of sheer sheer strength, while they are tough, they aren't doing... I mean, if I'd hit that at 100 in a Roma or something, I think I'd probably done about the same damage. I would have done more damage to the Roma, admittedly. Like, the front-on collisions in these cars is... They are, they are pretty stuff, tough. Uh, we've, <laughs> we've nicked the door. <laughs> yes, it shall be my door. I mean, it's just... It's making it difficult... Ah, there we go. It's making it difficult to pull away, although we've broken... All of the steering has gone, actually, on the front. I don't have any more steering left. Uh, <laughs> We've really made a proper bendy bus now. We've really made a permanent bendy bus right there. But there we go. For those curious about how the strengths and so on of the vehicles... <laughs> okay, no. I've got to try this once more. I've got to try this once more. Then I will end the video. I'm having too much fun. What happens now if we hit the other side? What happens if we hit the other side of the bus? Uh, it's not very easy to manoeuvre this anymore. But, uh... Yeah, in, in terms of in terms of strength, yeah, these things are tough. Uh, they are not as deformable as the beam vehicles. I don't think anyone was perhaps expecting them to be, uh, but they do still, you know, take damage. And how you build them will make a difference. You saw the damage that little sports car took in identical impacts to the likes of the hatchback and to the likes of this tough pickup truck. So it will make a difference how you build them as to how much punishment they will take in collisions. Oh, we didn't even roll the bus. We've punted it onto its side and we're stuck again, aren't we? Uh, we do seem to get crash welded to the bus quite well. We didn't get crash welded to any of the cars. The cars all got pinged clear. Uh, but apparently to the bus, we get all sorts of crash welding. I think we actually survived that one. We survived that one with all of our car in one piece as well. I've actually, <laughs> we've straightened the bendy bus out. It's now just a, well, skinny bus in the middle. That's quite, that's quite fun. Yeah. The automation cars do certainly... Oh, did you lose a wheel after the... Fact. Ah, uh, who knows. The automation cars are certainly strong. They will take a beating and they can certainly dish out a beating. But they are perhaps not as OP strong as I initially thought. See what they did. And as I said, how you build them is going to play a very, very big part. Your chassis material, your panel material. And so you make a little fiberglass sports car and it will get eaten by a, well, a pickup like this one. 
That, though, is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and a big thank you to the developers of both Beam and Automation to allow me to play around with this uh, fantastic addition to the game a little bit early. Until next time, though, a uh, goodbye.